Hello folks, the Counter Nerd here bringing you another nerdy video. Now, we're going to be doing some silent streams as it is late at night. And I don't want to risk uh, waking my sister as she does have work in the morning. And I want to make sure that, I, you know, she's well rested for that. So I'm just going to mute my mic. And we'll continue with the next set of videos, possibly silent. Will you stop eating? Oh, I'm hungry. Stuff your face at camp. For now, watch the bloody road. Enemies ahead! I could have a try at that. I am afraid not. Oh look, the more fun to be had. I could have a try at that. No, no, I think not. <sighs> Ball! Very well. As you say. I am your death!
So yeah, folks. One of the most annoying things is that Zev has no lock picking skills, as I've shown. It is incredibly furious. But funny enough, people are literally talking about like all my freaking god. Unfortunately, unless we were playing on PC, there, there is no option. Well, if we were able to play on PC, we were able to get fucking constantly crashing on me, we wouldn't have an issue. But unless we have an issue. My Valena returned. She told me of your daring rescue. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. Take this. A reward for your deed. It's dwarven made and should serve you well. Thank you again. I'm forever in your debt. The deep dark before dawn's first light seems eternal, but know that the sun will rise. Make us blessings upon. Upon you, warden. Here I am. Make us blessings upon you, warden. Family ran from Redcliffe the night after the first attack. You saved us. I can't believe we're alive. That's what everyone is saying. We might have to evacuate the village if those darkspawn come closer. With mother and father both gone, I suppose they'll send us to an orphanage. I won't forget what you did, though. Neither of us will. Thank you. With mother and father dead, we don't have any money. I think we have relatives in Denerim, but we've no way to get there. We'll be fine. I promised mother I'd see to Bevan's safety, and I will. Oh! Your path is probably much too dangerous for us. There are wagons going there, but it would be expensive. We should leave now, I suppose. There's a... These are terrible times. Just terrible. Good day. There are many gone who we must honor. But we must also remember those who aided us in our darkest hour.
Those stung with a hundred arrows, those suffering from ailments both great and small, his heart If there's anything I can do for you, I'm sure. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. Uh, goodbye. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Why, thank you so much. A fine gift. You have my thanks. Very nice. Very nice indeed. You have excellent taste. I see it found some of the crystals that I told it about. Well done. So, what does it think? They don't make me look any wider, do they? I find I'm already too wide as it is.
It must be the vertical pattern it put them in. Did it know to do that? It must have. I think it should find some more as soon as possible. I want to glitter from ear to ear, so to speak. I've watched a lot of humans in my time. It should be aware that I've decided that it is not much like any of them. Surely it must come from some superior lineage, yes? Some breed of flesh creature that has decided to elevate its genetic stock above its natural shortcomings? Then that must be it. The humans have always spoken about elves being inferior, but obviously this is their own stupidity talking. I would appreciate if it didn't spread around that I said anything. Humans might start to get the wrong idea. They might start thinking their race is not completely hopeless. Now, let us crush something into a fine paste before it starts to think I've gone all soft. Perish the thought. It speaks. It doesn't have better things to do. Oh yes, that I remember quite well. My former master, the Mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum snarl at that villager there, be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> that is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. <laughs> Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. I was once larger, ten feet tall, than the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down! Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. With a chisel, and a lot of nerve. He did love using that control rod fondled it so much his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. Ha! <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Good. Clearly, I am worth it. I'd have happily stomped them all into paste, and then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them, too. In fact, after 30 years of watching them, I'd do it twice. What I didn't like was being ordered to do it. Dangled in front of those frightened morons like some... scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. The first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. Ugh. I traveled with the mage. He did a lot of traveling, I remember that. But where we went? It is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No, there are only images. I was somewhere dark. I have no idea. Wilhelm used to brag that the dwarves stopped making golems centuries ago. I do not age as you soft creatures do. Sadly, my memory is no better. Plus, I get bored and stop paying attention. Good. I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? It speaks. Yes, its adventures are interesting, even if the chances for success are remarkably slim. Does it wish me to leave? I can, though I see no reason to go. No doubt. Without me, <laughs> perhaps we should continue.
its chances of success are small enough without further dawdling. You called. I am hardly surprised. To put it, no one has a place here. Your farmers wish... Very well. As you wish. You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But, after I became a Great Warden, I did some checking and... Well, I found out she's still alive. In Denerim. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. Could we? I'd appreciate that. If something happened to her and I never went to at least see her, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. Something on your mind? Of course. Never, never what? Had a good pair of shoes? I'm not sure I do. Have I never seen a basilisk? Ate jellied ham? Have I never licked a lamppost in winter? Make fun of my comrade in arms? Perish the thought. Well, you tell me. Have you ever licked a lamppost in winter? Just the once, and you didn't lose half of your tongue in the process. <laughs> I'm impressed. I, myself, never had the pleasure. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course. But, you know. Well, living in the Chantry is it's not exactly a life for rambunctious boys. They, they raised me to be a gentleman. That's not so bad, is it? I've uh, no urge to rush into anything. We, we may not even survive what is to come, after all. Enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's go. Something on your mind? Of course. You mean other than becoming a Grey Warden? Hmm. You know, I asked Duncan this too, and all I got was, you'll see. Oh, it's not that Duncan wants to keep it a secret, it's just that the Grey Wardens don't discuss it much. I gather it's not a pleasant topic. The first change I noticed was an increase in appetite. I used to get up in the middle of the night and raid the castle larder. I thought I was starving. I'd slurp down every dinner like it was my last, and <laughs> my face all covered in gravy. When I'd look up, the other Grey Wardens would stare, then laugh themselves to tears. Really? I saw you eating dinner the other day. Savage. Ah yes, the classy camaraderie of two men traveling out in the open. I take it you were like this before the joining, then. Oh, and then there were the nightmares. 
Duncan said it was part of how we sense the Darkspawn. We tap into their... Well, I don't know what you call it. Their group mind. And when we sleep, it's even worse. You learn to block it out after a while, but at first it's hard. It's supposed to be worse for those who join during a blight. How is it for you? Some people never have much trouble, but that's rare. Others have trouble sleeping their entire life. They're just more sensitive, I suppose. Everyone ends up the same, though. Once you reach a certain age, the real nightmares come. That's how a Grey Warden knows his time has come. Oh, that's right. We never had time to tell you that part, did we? Well, in addition to all the other wonderful things about being a Grey Warden, you don't need to worry about dying from old age. You've got 30 years to live. Give or take. The taint. It's a death sentence. Ultimately, your body won't be able to take it. When the time comes, most Grey Wardens go to Orzammar and die in battle rather than waiting. It's tradition. And you wondered why we kept the joining a secret from the new recruits. And there you have it. You know, Duncan... He started having the nightmares again. He told me that in private. He said it wouldn't be long before he'd go to Orzammar himself. I guess he got what he wanted. I just wish it had been something worthy of him. I know. Ending the blight should make this all worthwhile, right? Something on your mind? Of course. I didn't know them for very long. But I guess it was longer than you. You never met them all, did you? They were quite a group. Actually, they felt like an extended family, since we were all cut off from our former lives. We also laughed more than you'd think. There was this one time... Well, you probably don't want to hear stories about men you didn't know. There was one Grey Warden who came all the way from Landerfels. What was his name? Was Gregor. Gregor. He was a burly man with the biggest, fuzziest beard you've ever seen. And the man could drink. He drank all the time, but he never got drunk. Finally, we all made a pool to see just how many pints it would take to put him under the table. Sometimes. We were kin of a sort. All of us had gone through the joining, so we knew... Well, anyhow. It doesn't have to be deadly serious all the time. Anyhow, we never did find out. He said he'd drink a pint of every half pint that the rest of us drank. He was still going by the time the rest of us were passed out. I'm told that Duncan walked in later on and saw us all passed out from one end of the hall to the other and Gregor still drinking. <laughs> Duncan laughed until he nearly... until... Yes, I... I suppose so. I thought I was done with this, but... it just struck me that I have nothing to remember Duncan by, nothing at all. There's no body, not even a token of his, that I could take with me. That must sound really stupid to you. I just would have liked something of his to take with me, that's all. Well, there's no use in moaning about it, is there? He's gone. Let's just go. 
I'm wondering something. I'd like to know your thoughts about some of our traveling companions. Do you mind if I ask? I've got this nefarious plan to go around to each of them and secretly tell them all the nasty things you said. That way they'll mutiny and I shall become the group leader. <laughs> What? Lead? Me? No, 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 no leading. Bad things happen when I lead. We get lost, people die, and the next thing you know I'm stranded somewhere, without any pants. Seriously though, I'm only curious. I've had enough time to form my own opinions, and I just want to see if yours are any different. Just try and stop me. Zevran, the elf. You can't trust him, can you? Do you believe his so-called vow? Then why bring him along? Don't you think he might try to kill you again? Maybe he's just biding his time. Yes, well he is at that. So useful, you could just die, right? What about Sten? The way he looks at me with those eyes. Creepy. And he's so quiet for someone so big. Yet he doesn't seem quite so bad as the Chantry tells us. According to them, his philosophy is vile and evil. Yet he seems so reasonable. And yet, he killed all those people. He doesn't even deny it. Doesn't that bother you? Yet he seems otherwise honorable and even wise. I don't get it. What about Liliana? Is she crazy? Or do you really believe in her vision? That's one way to put it. I don't know what to make of her. If you look at her when she doesn't see you, she just looks so... so sad. I almost feel guilty taking her away from her life. Yes, I know. Still, I feel badly for her. Morrigan, do you trust her? Think about it. Maybe Flemeth sent her with us for some other reason than she said. Well, aside from the fact that she's a complete and utter bitch, no, I don't like her at all. Why, do you? Great. So they were right. Well, it's your funeral. Enough. I think my curio... Something on your mind? Of course. I've a question, if I may. Well, here's the thing. I swore an oath to serve you, yes? And I understand the quest you're on, and this is all very fine and well. My question pertains to what you intend to do with me once this business is over with, as a point of curiosity. Could I? And what if I didn't wish to leave? Indeed. Mm. I might even be glad to call myself such, come to think of it. 
It is good to know what my options might be, but that is for another time. For now, we have much to do, yes? What say you? By all means. My adventures? <laughs> I'm hardly an old man just returned from across the ocean, am I? Should I shake my fist at nearby children while I talk about the good old days? You mean you want to hear about the grueling training? Being locked in an oubliette for weeks at a time? The slavery? The festering injuries? Or are we seeking something more glamorous? Oh, those things never happened to me. Let's see, my second mission ever for the Crows was a bit intriguing. I was sent to kill a mage who had been meddling in politics. In Antiva, nobody is too important to escape the reach of the Crows. They have killed kings and queens. That is simply how it is. As it turned out, the mage in question was quite a delightful young woman. Long, divine legs, as I recall. I caught her in a carriage on her way to escape to the provinces. After I killed her guard, she got down on her hands and knees and begged for her life. Rather aptly, I might add. So I joined her in the carriage for the night and left the next morning. Yes, twice, actually. Then she decided to try and use me instead. The woman had actually convinced me to speak to the crows on her behalf. What can I say? I was young and foolish at the time. Then, as I was kissing her goodbye to return to Antiva City, she slipped on the threshold and fell backwards out of the carriage. Broke her neck. Shame, really, but at least it happened quickly. At first, yes. Well, not upset. Surprised is really a better word. Then I found out that she had told the driver to take her to Janellen instead. She had planned to lose me in the provinces. I would have looked very foolish to the crows. As it was, my master was very impressed that I had done such a fine job of making it look like an accident. The circle of magi was unaware of foul play and everyone was happier all around. I got stupid, in fact, and very lucky. It was after that when I learned that one needn't let a pretty face go to your head. Professionalism was key. That's my moral of the day, you see. And one that not everyone learns, I'm sad to say. But that's enough tail spinning from me for the moment. Talking about the mage has made me a bit nostalgic, I'm afraid. Ah, the good old days. <laughs> What say you? Again? I'm game. Did you always live in an alienate? Was it very terrible? I have never been to the Denerim alienate, but I hear that life is hard and there is so much squalor. In Orle, most Alvin servants live in the homes of their masters often in great wealth and luxury.
Yes, but some humans are treated cruelly too. It is not just elves. A well-trained elven servant is highly valued in Orle. They are nimble and dexterous, and many people find them pleasing to look at. No, I did not mean it that way. Oh, my words were clumsily chosen. I did not mean to offend. I... Ugh, I am sorry. Of course. I am sorry if I implied otherwise. Thank you. You have given me a lot to think about. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Where did you hear this? And did you not think that this could be historical fact and no longer true? <laughs> not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are... are what we call bards. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Nobles, mostly. In Orle, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems, but it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white feraldin and wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orlais. But enough about that. 
Let us move on. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? I miss Valroyau. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Valroyau was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Valroyau, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlais, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orlais, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orlais. Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Orlais is very fashionable, almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes! Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. When I left Orlais, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colors, of course, it was spring. I had my eye on a pair my shoemaker was working on. It was covered in pale blue silk with amber beads on the toe. The shoes made in Orlais were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Yeah, just look at them. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day. But we have things to do, don't we? Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? You called. I am hardly surprised. Very well. Speak then. Then I suggest we move on. As you... Is cold in my tent all alone. So you shall come to my tent? But whatever shall we do in that tiny little space together while we wait for it to warm? Then let us waste no more time with foolish talk. I see the stories they tell of Grey Warden endurance are not exaggerated. <laughs> Indeed there are. The unanswered question, of course, is whether the endurance exists because of the taint within you, or because the Grey Wardens are by nature so very healthy. I enjoy the thought that tis a little of both. Natural prowess, driven by a darker side. That is entirely up to you. Simply know that I have no designs on your independence. I wish only to do what I desire, and if that coincides with what you desire, then so be it. 
And should you decide not to continue our misadventure, then so be it. Very simple, is it not? Oh, now you ruin the mood by speaking profanities. Silly man. Come then, let us be off before the others begin to stare. I have something for you. I mean that I have a gift for you. Tis a ring. Now before you get any foolish notions, let me explain. Flemeth once gave me the ring because it allowed her to find me no matter where I went, in case I was ever captured by hunters. I disabled its power as soon as we left the wilds. Recently, however, I thought to change it. Now, I will be able to find whoever wears it instead. It is not given out of sentimentality. I believe you were too important to risk. If you were captured, this ring would allow the rest of us to find you quickly. You are welcome. Perhaps it will be useful someday. <laughs> day. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> I assume you are actually asking whether Flemeth herself gave birth to me. Truly, I do not know. I once asked Flemeth that very question and she merely laughed at me. It is not inconceivable that she could capture a chastened man, or perhaps change to a more attractive form to attract him willingly. I find it more difficult to imagine her with child. It seems likely, does it not? In an animal form, a babe could easily be spirited away and raised as Flemeth's own. I do know the tales of Flemeth having many daughters, even though I have never met another. And Flemeth has always treated me as her blood. <laughs> what an odd thing to say! Why must love enter into the equation? Flemeth taught me everything I needed to learn. How to survive, the meaning of power, the truth of men. If other mothers do not teach these things, then I believe them the lesser. You suppose it's true? Tis true. Take yourself. You do not honestly desire such things from me, do you? Tis better to be free of such cloying and cluttering delusions as love. Then more the fool you, I think. I tire of this discussion. Let us... <laughs> we are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Ah. <laughs> we are in camp, so tis as good a... Discuss away. What is there to speak of? <laughs> Do you wish me to tell you how wonderful you are? Shall I say you are virile and manly? An odd question, is it not? What do you foresee? Marriage? Children? Shall we settle in the countryside? You paint the shed while I bake the bread? What do I want? I... You are a rather curious and frustrating man. Is what you already possess not enough? Must you always want more? Enough. I grow tired.
Thank mm -hmm. you.